Well, what does one say after a movie like this? I think something like oomph would be uh, correct to say. Um, let's invite the makers of this film, the two actors here uh, in the hall. Did you watch, guys, or did you stay outside? You stayed outside, right? First of all, the director, Fien Troch, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Sebastian van Dun, one of the actors. And Mistral Guidotti, the other actor in uh, the leading roles in this movie, Home. Hi. Have a seat. And everyone uh, who's uh, watching abroad, um, please uh, join the conversation. Uh, you're free to ask anything you want or comment or do it on my uh, WhatsApp number. It's still on the left uh, bottom of the screen. Screen, not scream. Uh, and otherwise, you can use one of the uh, hashtags, uh, live cinema. And then we'll uh, uh, include your question in the Q&A now. Um, first of all, to lighten the mood a little bit, <coughs> maybe that's good before we dive into the, the, the background of the, the film. Uh, uh, you've been to many festivals already because the film had a great success at the film festival in Venice. Yep. Uh, in a special competition there, it won uh, the award for best uh, directing. That's a great thing, and it also premiered there. Um, but, well, I've met you a little bit, and I saw you on the screen before uh, the screening. Uh, you're used to the press and all the things that comes with, um, well, going to festivals like this, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, a bit. Yeah, yeah, a bit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but because I saw you, you have a hidden talent. It's juggling. Is that true? <laughs> yes. Yes, okay. I have three uh, uh, orange juice. You want me to juggle? That's two. That's three, yeah. Maybe? If that's okay. <laughs> just to warm up, just to warm up. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Did we know? <laughs> So okay, we didn't prepare this, so it's <laughs> a surprise. Under pressure, big effort. Um, Fien, uh, to start with, um, we saw in the beginning, because it's a question from Mart uh, right away on uh, WhatsApp, we saw in the beginning that the film is inspired by, by true events. Uh, what events were those? Um, it's um, a document an American documentary I saw about um, juveniles, and um, it's mainly about uh, John and his mother. Mm -hmm. So that is kind of, yeah, the, the story in that documentary was exactly kind of the same. The ending was completely different, but it's also about this, this horrible relationship with it, uh, between a, a 16, 17-year-old son and his mother mm -hmm. and how he gets his friends involved in this whole thing and it ends with a murder. Mm. Um, and I felt kind of obliged to put it in the beginning because it was so intense and it was so bigger than real life. Yeah. that I felt kind of obliged to put it there. Yeah. Um, why did you choose th this theme? Um, is it something you saw around you or uh, besides the story you heard? Um, uh, what, what's the inspiration oh, for this story? What, what theme? Because a lot of theme. themes. Yeah, the theme. what theme? Well, I mean, the, the, a lot the, of the tension theme. between generations, the ah, yeah, yeah. tension in families, uh, the sexual tension that was going on. It's so intense. Mm. I think it grabbed everything, at everyone at the throat. Uh, if that's correct English, mm. but uh, uh, <laughs> where did you where did you get that uh, inspiration from? Well, I don't. I, I know I've always my previous films were always about this relationship between adults and children. Mm -hmm. uh, as a mother of two children myself, the oldest one is eight years old. I felt very. It felt it became too close when it was really children. So I felt the urge to make them older. Mm -hmm. Also, maybe being nostalgic about that period, realizing I'm not young anymore. Uh -huh. um, uh, that combination, and then I started thinking back about, uh, on how it was to be a uh, teenager. And this main thing was there is this endless conflict between you and the authorities. Yeah. But not even all, I mean, in a film it might be extreme, but for me it was not always in a bad way. It felt more like a necessity that had to happen in a period in your life where you have yeah. to struggle with those things and you are almost obliged to be against them and they have to be against you. Yeah. So I think that's why the tension, that was the basic tension, I think. Yeah. I but you could have chosen for the lighthearted. Mm, I never uh, you never do. <laughs> <laughs> a way to, to look back uh, to a period you've experienced. Uh, but it's, it's this, well, it's this dark side of it. Yeah, but it's a movie. I, I, don't, I don't know, in, in history, 
for me, the best things are, I mean, the most interesting things are always about the struggle and not about life is good, love is great, uh -huh. everything's going well, I'm like, yeah, great for you, but what, what's the story? Yeah. So for me, it's always the tension and the drama is always, unfortunately, in the more extreme situations where things go wrong. Yeah. And of course, luckily, I didn't live that when I was a teenager, but I, all the scenes where you see them struggling with just with authority, that's something I lived very hard when I was 16. So, and then you make it bigger, and then you make a fiction film, and then you search for extreme situations, of course, yeah. luckily. How did you work? Because, well, you have this story, you have this script, but then you have to cast uh, young boys. They're here now, but how did you cast them? How, how did that work? Well, the thing is, they first they were interviewed. I wasn't even there, but it was like, tw I think, 20-minute interview where they were asked about themselves, where they would, where, where they would see themselves in 10 years. They, were shown, they would show them um, YouTube films. They had to react to it. They had to talk about life in general because I knew that they would have to put a lot of their own personality in the film. They would have to help me uh, to learn me a little bit how it is to be a teenager now. Yeah. So apart from their... Is it, is it a lot different from when you were a teenager, you think? Well, that was because my biggest fear, that yeah. I would be like the, outst the outcast and looking at young people. Yeah. S especially with all the with the social media thing that uh -huh. I was uh, that I didn't have when I was a teenager, but quickly it became clear that the basic the basis and the struggle that I had when I was a teenager and the the, the things I longed for as a teenager was exactly the same uh -huh. as now. So that was that was a good part because that immediately I was connected again with that period. Okay. So yeah. Did you offer a script? Or did you finish the script later on when you had casted the, the we, boys? The script was finished when we started casting. The only thing I w knew was that the way they talked, the way s s little things they said, little remarks they made, that the script, we were very open to adapt things. Yeah. But the story itself stayed the same. It was more about the way you speak, the way you, yeah, the way you stand when you're in the parking lot, yeah, yeah, the way yeah. you act. Because then, uh, Sebastian, for you maybe uh, uh, a good question. For the first time you saw the script, uh, and all the details in it, and the. But uh, I'm sorry, yeah. I have to interrupt. He, he never read the. They never read the script. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> That's the trick. So you were lured into it. No, they <laughs> no, knew no. How what exactly what they. Uh, well, we, yeah. knew, we knew the story, but we never uh, uh, had the script. We never wrote the script, and she also said like, we don't want you to make an image or something that ah. she wants us to let like stay intact, uh -huh. so that we keep. Or self-being. So you were told just before you did a scene, uh, this is what it's gonna be, and not what part yeah. it's gonna be of the bigger story. She she told like like yeah we knew the story, and every scene that we we made it was like okay so today we're gonna do this one it comes after that, and so uh, I don't know your mother comes in and you have to react on uh, on her uh, yeah you got to react like. You, how you would react, yeah. um, like Kevin or like John or. Ah. Uh, but the, you did know the scenes. It's not that I mean. Yeah, but not, not, yeah. There were not, not the bigger surprises story. on the set. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I must admit that um, if I would have given them the script with their permission, they would have never read it. No. I realized afterwards. No, <laughs> yeah. I would never have read the script. True? Is that true? That was something I discovered. I didn't understand the real. No, no. That you would never, have, if I would have given you the script, you wouldn't yeah. have read it. No. No. <laughs> no. You wouldn't read it or you wouldn't agree to do it. Because if you would have read it yeah. uh, beforehand, the whole story, because you have an intense role mm -hmm. uh, uh, with the sexual abuse and everything, if you knew beforehand, would you agree to, to play the role? Yeah, of course. But he knew. Yeah? I'm sorry, I don't want to talk knew. for them. No, no, no it's okay. <laughs> We're getting he things knew clear what here. You had to do. Yeah, huh? I knew. Okay. You just didn't read the script. So. Okay, so that, <laughs> that, that, those details you told, but the rest of okay. it. Uh, but, but what did you? What, what was your impression in the beginning when, when, when you heard about the whole story? Could you relate? Could, in, mm. in, in a way. She she told me a little bit about my uh, role, but not uh, the whole story. She didn't tell me so. It was also for me, uh, I, when I saw the film, for me it was also the first time that I saw everything together, so it was yeah. cool, but I didn't knew a lot. Yeah, you said cool, but we talked a little bit before, and you said, well, the first time I saw it, it was... Uh, yeah, it was shocking and... Shocking and emotional. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah well, what way? <laughs> because I can imagine, but um, for you. Uh, the music has a lot of uh, to do with it. Uh -huh. Uh, and also for me, because it's my first role, and yeah. with uh, the nice sound effect of the move, uh, the the cinema, so it came hard. Yeah. So yeah. But the, 
the story, what's happening within these families. Mm. It didn't shock you in the beginning, like, oh my God, I have to play this role? Yeah. Or is it something you're, you're used I, to? I or? didn't really uh, thought it, it would happen, uh, a mother abusing a guy, so... Mm. But it was cool, it was... Uh, yeah. It's all in her head. Or, or, I or, don't know. or did you I don't do the story so. because you think this is happening a lot? Or what no, was no, no, because I checked, of course, when I was writing it. It, ca it was an American story yeah. thing, and I checked with a with psychiatrist, and they said, of course, it happens, but it's, we, they even didn't have cases in Belgium that they could rely to because mm. they said, we cannot say it's not happening, but it's so hidden, and it's such a weird situation because those people at, are at an age where they should, like it is in a film, where they should mm. defend themselves or they should find a solution by themselves. I mean, they should not find a solution by themselves, but it's seen like that. Yeah. Um, so and there's no. something I didn't want to tell it because it happens a lot, uh, no, no, <laughs> luckily. Okay. No, yeah, yeah, we hope so. Yeah. Uh, and they're stronger than their parents. Is that a thing you did in pur on purpose? Or that was my impression. You mean physically? That yeah, stronger yeah, that's, that's mentally and physically, actually. But, sorry, it's about John and his mother relationship oh, well, in some general. Of the kids, yeah. Yeah, the thing is, when I wrote the script, um, I wanted to... My, my main thing was that I felt a very... I was very warm-hearted towards that generation. Yeah. And I, I wanted to show how complicated it is to be a teenager at the same time knowing it must be complicated to, as an adult to try yeah. to get into their hidden world. Yeah. Um, now I forgot the question, I'm sorry. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It I was think, a good uh, answer anyway. Maybe it was a bad <laughs> question. <laughs> could, could be I'm possible. sorry, I don't know what the beginning was. <laughs> we'll rewind it on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, because we go to internet, because we get many questions, of course, uh, you can keep sending them. Um, uh, maybe uh, for you, Mistral, um, sexual abuse, Joost says it on WhatsApp, um, is a very uh, loaded and sensitive subject. Uh, how do you prepare for a role like that? Um, my my comparing uh, my the the woman who played my mother in the movie. Yeah, she's uh, already a good actress. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was uh, an extra motivation to do my best. Yeah, and she also also uh, taught me a lot of things. And and we had a, uh, a trust. We trust each other. So yeah, yeah, it had a good effect on the movie. You felt confident. Yeah, and free of enough. course. Yeah. It's important, I think, yeah. before you start something like this. It's not something you do. You rehearse a lot, I think. No, no, no we never. it's at the moment itself yeah. that you do it. One takers, or how does it go? Mm, few times. Few times. <laughs> He's laughing. <laughs> um, to Fien, uh, uh, Just of Just uh, says on WhatsApp: <laughs> Do you think that you've made the four by three aspect ratio popular among the film students, for example? <laughs> Gus Van Sant did it also, but yeah. uh, some other I think other, if it uh, would directors? become popular, it would be more Gus Van Sant than me, I guess. But <laughs> um, the, I think the most important thing is for me that I did it because of my this whole system we developed, not developed, but anyway, to from to make it as documentary as possible. Yeah. Knowing that now these days we don't use that format anymore, but to have an indirect feeling when you watch it that it's like a this documentary home thing, video feel. Or yeah, thing, or? because in the in the in the in the sixties, seventies, eighties, that was the format, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and now we don't see that like that anymore. But I think it was part of this whole system we had to make it more documentary that we decided to do that, knowing that most people won't say, ah, I think I felt it was documentary because of. But it's like I said, it's very indirect. I think that mm -hmm. you you link it with documentary. Yeah. But just to say, I don't know, it would be an honor if people would, if but as do, long so. as they know why they do it. It's yeah. good. Ramon Roll says also, uh, why is the film shot in f uh, four by three? Well, you've answered that question already, but Jessica says, uh, why did you decide to incorporate images shot with smartphones in mm. the film? Well, that was something that me and my um, boyfriend who wrote, we, we wrote the script together and mm -hmm. he edited, and I always kept on saying, I want this energy in the film. Even if they do nothing or nothing special, I want this typically this typical thing of teenagers. And then I thought, what is typical now is that they film a lot themselves. Uh, and then we decided, why don't we just give them the smartphones from the production company? I mean, we buy smartphones for them, and they had the obligation to film each other mm -hmm. um, in between takes, uh, in between scenes. But also, when we did a scene, we said afterwards, we leave the, the living room or the kitchen. You can do whatever you want to do. You yeah. have half an hour. And then they shot each other. We had amazing material. We had like an enormous amount of so you material. You both did that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. all of them. And then 
or the two others too. Um, and then we, we were like, we'll see what we do with it. And I think what we wanted to have in the beginning with those uh, phones is to make it really the film of the youngsters. Uh -huh. And they have the energy of the youngsters and it quickly became clear that mingling it with those images had uh -huh. that result. Uh -huh. Great. Um, uh, <laughs> I just found out that I said the name just wrongly because it's just now via WhatsApp. So <laughs> just now via WhatsApp, I've received the following message. <laughs> <laughs> The soundtrack of Home is amazing, uh, someone says. Uh, if you send something on WhatsApp, please include your name, otherwise I keep making this mistake. <laughs> um, yeah, and that we have to talk about the music because the music is, uh, is well, y you've chosen this specifically, right? It's uh, one of your musical heroes. Yeah, my previous film, Kit, um, he was already like an inspiration. We had an amazing uh, composer, but we used Johnny Jewel's music to test certain things. Mm. Uh, which was John and Jewel, and then um, my boyfriend, he uh, got in contact with him through a film he was editing, yeah. and he was making the music for it, so they became good friends. And then at a certain point, he said with this film, my boyfriend said with this film, why don't we ask Johnny to make the music? And I said, my main thing why I said, I don't know, is because I love his music, but I thought I, I associated his music very much with metropol met metropolitan fast cars, bling uh -huh. bling, uh, Miami, yeah, I don't yeah, know, yeah. big uh -huh. city thing. So I thought, mm, it's not gonna match, or it will be weird, or the music will be too present. Um, but he said, yeah, whatever, you just went to, he had to go to LA anyway. He went uh -huh. there, he saw him, he showed him a four hour version, and he was super enthusiastic, and he said, wow. uh, I'll give you whatever you wanna have. Oh wow! And from the moment I put one song on the film, it was clear that it, all my fear, or the reason why I was doubting was, was not right that it worked it's very a well. Match made and, in and heaven, my, I think, my, because yes, it, totally. it gives an extra layer of intenseness. Yeah, and also I wanted to work before that. I really knew I wanted to work with like songs, uh -huh. where you even with singing and that the emotion could be right in your face and not like the subtle. You have to be very careful, to, yeah. which I normally would do and which I'm a very big fan of. And now it was I had the freedom to just go. If you, it's this music makes you cry. Go ahead because. I have a little uh, suitcase here, and uh, where's the record? <laughs> oh, here's the record. We have a, 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 a because it's uh, going to be released on vinyl, yeah. right? Um, I hope this works. Um, wait a minute. Where do we have? Oh yes, there it goes. No, wait. And then we have a little bit of the music because it, it's called Magazine, right? The yeah. soundtrack is going to be released in March. I think so. Johnny Jewel, does anyone know Johnny Jewel? Fingers? <laughs> One, so we have some hearts to steal. So yes. famous. Is it something for you, you always do, like uh, combine your film work? With music, sorry, I'm talking to you. <laughs> running out of time, so. No, sorry, what was it? No, do you, is, is music important for your work? Uh, totally, but it was the first time that I am. Um, normally, I even have parts of the music while I'm writing. Yeah. Problem is that I start writing very emotional, <laughs> and that I start to adapt my thing, my or that I think my what I'm writing is great because the music is great. Uh -huh. to. Yeah. And now I didn't have anything, and that was good too. Now the music came after the film. After ah, that's the we first time. Editing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There's a, a lot of first timers in this movie, right? Because your whole style is different from the third movies before, uh, and and the success is bigger as well. <laughs> from the uh, very talented but underdog position, you went into almost mainstream success. Now, that's a good thing. Still with a dark theme, but that's uh, it's going well. The end of the movie is clearly uh, an open end. Why did you choose that? Because all my films have an open end, so I probably malfunctioning. That's not a reason. That's not, um, a reason. that's not a reason. You could have done I think, an, uh, anything maybe else. Maybe I wanted to say what I what I love to say is that um, uh, the, the the frustration might be there's no punishment, but the nice thing might also be that you didn't want them to be punished. That you were slightly agreeing with what they were doing, or you knew there was no other way to solve this problem. Yeah. Um, and then there's of course the message 
that he didn't pun uh, uh, punch the other guy in the, fa in the face, but also, there's also for me this thing, look how this danger that he might fall back into his old habits, habits is always around him. Yeah. So it's not only like, look, he has changed, maybe that day had changed, but everything. And yeah, life goes on and it's a little bit more complicated than you do something or you get punished or you get a second chance, everything goes well. It's much more complicated than that. That's a great ending. Uh, uh, our time is uh, finished. Uh, unfortunately, we could have talked for a half an hour more, but uh, thank you for being here. Uh, give thank them, you very uh, much. A lot of love, you, ladies and gentlemen. Sebastian, Mistral, and Fintroch. Everyone in uh, Rotterdam, thank you for watching, of course, and everyone watching abroad, uh, thank you as well. Thank you for sending your questions. Do this again tomorrow because we will be back with IFFR Live uh, at 4 o'clock and 8 o'clock again uh, on Sunday. That's Central European time, so you have to do the math yourself. And tomorrow we have the wedding and we have the giant for you tomorrow. So hashtag live cinema, uh, keep talking and keep sending those requesting questions. Thank you for watching. Have a good night. Thank you.